happy freaking Saturday, everybody. Happy Saturday. Man, and I almost I almost forgot the music, which I know I'm probably the only one that cares about, but I enjoy it on the live streams. So why not? Why not? Um I survived the week. I've been perpetually sick. <laughs> um that's the thing about kids is, uh, and some of you with kids know this, but when they get sick, you get sick. It's like your immune system says, you know what? We're just going to like, you've been, you've been a healthy person your whole life. You've avoided the sickness. Not anymore. You're done. It's over. Welcome to reality. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, been dealing with sick, sick kid all week. I got sick. Um, and you can't really tell right now um, because I've been trying to stay hydrated, but it's like half of my face is just stuffed up. And that is, that's the worst. It's being 75% sick sucks because to everyone else, you look fine. Like, suck it up, soldier. <laughs> Happy Saturday, guys. I hope everyone is doing fantastic. Let's go ahead and shout out the people in the chat. Starting off with my man, Marco, channel member. Thank you for being a channel member. Welcome in, Marco. Good to see you. Shout out to Homer Feltes, another channel member. Welcome in. Thank you. Uh, then we got Crazy Roach, another channel member joining in. Kaleidoscope of Knives. How's it going? How's it going? Uh, Kevin C. in the house. He says, cookies. I want cookies for breakfast. Don't they make that? Like, doesn't Chips Ahoy make a cereal or something that we give our kids so that... You, uh, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure that it's out there. Cookies for breakfast. Why not? I'll show you a balanced diet. How's it going, Kevin C? Uh, welcome into Ginger Fisher 75. Thanks for being a channel member, brother. Appreciate you. Oh, yeah. Uh, Paul McConnelly in the house. We got my man Jim Miller. Welcome in, Jim. Good to see you, brother. Thanks for being a channel member. Welcome into Dwayne Letterman. He says, Howdy, guys. Gonna lurk for a while. Lurk away, brother. That's what we're doing today. Uh, Lone Star Cowboy says, Is that a banana in your text, or are you just glad to be here? Banana, not just for everyday carry anymore. You know what it is? It's because uh, the the system I use to stream, and when it pulls up the chat box, it doesn't know how to create the uh, the custom emojis that are in that I've that I've uploaded. It'll do the regular emojis most of the time, so it just it just puts whatever I named it. So the absolutely bananas custom emoji for channel members, you know, it's part of the channel member set. It doesn't know what to do, so it just says banana. That's uh, did I kill the drama? Are we asleep yet? Great. Um, let's see here. Uh, welcome into Joseph S. He says good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, my friend. Uh, we've got CPM. What's up, dude? Thanks for joining in. Mark Parks. Thanks for being a channel member. Uh, we got Knife Nut sixty nine. Says hey, roll and everyone. How's it going, man? Good to see you. Uh, Todd Carr, welcome in. Thanks for being a channel member. All right. All right. Yeah. So we're going to get it going, guys. Uh, <clears throat> it's been it's it's been a rough week for me. You may have noticed I haven't been uploading as much this last week as I normally do. I usually try to get, you know, four, five videos out plus a couple live streams. It's been tough because I've been sick. Uh, I promise you more is on the way and oh my goodness shout out to my boy blue blue minati ninja coming in with five gifted memberships you get you get all the sound effects blue thank you man so generous so very generous and by the way uh shout out to the new connoisseurs and collectors of all things sharp and shiny if you fellas who were recently gifted memberships would like to check out the members only discord that is one of the perks of being a channel member go, go on over to my community tab on youtube and uh I'll, you know what you know what? i'll i'll just show you I'll, how about i do that some people are visual learners right so if you go over here and you search for roll shambo 
and you're a channel member because only channel, channel members will see this post. And then you go on over to the community tab. You'll see that my most recent post right here has an invite link to the Discord. Uh, you don't have to remain a channel member to remain in the Discord. You just have to be a channel member to see that invite link and then you can join forever. Once you leave, you can never... Well, no, that's not true. You could definitely leave. Um, <clears throat> but if you want, you can join the Members Only Discord where we do pocket checks. Uh, I answer questions. We chat. We hang out. It's a good time. And uh, I've been adding more and more stuff to the Discord because I think that it's a lot of fun. Shout out to Ginger Fisher 75 member for five months. And I don't know how to say that message because it's all channel emojis. Certified badass. Thanks, Ginger Fisher 75 for being a channel member for five freaking months. Love to see it. Love to see it. Greg Vanderlip, welcome in, man. Certified badass. It's another one. <laughs> Thanks for being a channel member. Uh, he says, I'm a member and on Discord. Yes, he is. And it's good to see people in there too. It's fun to chat, you know, off live stream. Um, it's good to, to chop it up with the uh, the people that make the channel tick. The the gas in the engine. Sometimes you got to talk to the motor. I don't know where I was going with that allergy, uh, analogy. My point is, it's good to connect. That's, what, that's the whole point of doing these live streams, and the Discord gives me a chance to connect with you guys outside of it as well. Marco says, you can check out, but you can never leave. I don't make the rules. Marco makes the rules. Talk to Marco. Lone Star Cowboy says, going to fly like an eagle. Is, is, that a, is that a Mark Wahlberg quote where he's like... Uh, I'm a peacock. You got to let me fly. What movie is that? What movie is that? All right. Todd Carr says, going into lurk mode for a bit. We got some lurkers. Lurk away, brother. He says, roll is losing it. He's got the sickness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, you know what? I, I can't lose my marbles because I lost them a long time ago. This is a fact. Um, what's interesting to me is, is that I've, I, before I had the channel, one of my favorite things to do was look up knife torture tests and, uh, and see what knives could really stand up to. I think that we take for granted just how well knives can be built. And so before the live, I was actually checking out uh, some torture tests, and I was thinking maybe we could watch watch a few together, see what's see what's up there, see what's gonna fail. We can get some live commentary going on that. If you want to know what I was carrying today, um, I can't show you the whole carry because it includes knives that I have not put videos up for. So we're going to save that. But one of them, one of the knives that I carry today is this guy. It's the Kubi Verigero in cryo treated 14 c28n i this is one that's been perpetually stuck in my pocket absolutely freaking love this knife uh right now you can get it at, at kubi shopping for like 118 or if you use the code uh, rs06 lt you can get it for six percent off and get uh get it for 110 a buck 10 for this is pretty damn good um, the nice thing about it is, is that it's a working man's steel, so it's going to hold a good edge, but it's also going to be one that you can sharpen and refine. Uh, the 14 C takes a really, really good edge and it's got titanium. And because it doesn't cost two, three, 400 bucks, you don't have to feel bad when you damage this guy, you know, use it away, ding it up, throw it in your pocket. Can't wait to do my update on, on this one. This is a good one, the Kubi Verigero. But let's see what's in your pocket. What did you carry today? Did you carry one knife? Did you carry like 10 knives? Some of you guys walk around like a living armory. Yeah, I, I hear your pockets clanking. Let's find out. And by the way, guys, uh, for those of you who are part of the Discord, if you would like to have your pocket check featured on the live stream, Hit up the Pocket Check channel in the Discord. Um, 
drink water has this guy. This is a beautiful Midgard's Messer Viking or the Viking. It's, oh man, I love Midgard's Messer knives. It, it, it's not a knife, that's a pocket sword. Hey, Greg Vanderlip, thank you for being a channel member for three months. He says, he says, hi everybody, I lurk, I in lurk mode, enjoy live and holiday. <laughs> You're killing me, brother. Uh, I always try to read these comments, how they're typed out. Sometimes it doesn't work too well for me. Um, thank you for being a channel member for three months. Oh, yeah. Bluminati Ninja says, make sure to smash that thumbs up button. Yes, yes, please do. It lets people know that we're live. It lets people know that we're here. And I definitely appreciate it. Hey, and uh, shout out to Experience Precision. Welcome in and uh, new channel member. Thank you for becoming a connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. This is Sparta! Welcome in, brother. And uh, make sure to hit up the Discord, which we are checking out right now. So yeah, I love this. That's a great picture right in front of the fireplace too. Fantastic. I love the contrast there. Uh, then we got the night. We got knife plebe uh, coming in with his. That's a man. That's one that I really want to check out too. That is a dead reckon Ridgeback. It's an integral button lock. You guys have seen it. I know you've seen it. They're American made integral button locks, and uh, they're pretty sexy. I want to say they're like three fifty to four fifty, depending on if you get the aluminum version or the titanium version. If you can get them at all, every time they release, they seem to sell out pretty quickly. But that's pretty sweet. I'm going to have to get my hands on one one of these days. Today is not that day, but it will come. Uh, Jim Miller coming in hot with the, that's the Hogue R, uh, Ritter, the RSK Ritter. I don't know what that slip joint is. I think it is. Yeah, I don't know. And Jim, you continually stump me on your on your pocket checks, man. <laughs> <laughs> what is what is it? <laughs> oh man here we go again this segment called roll shambo misidentifies knives for 15 minutes straight um i'm not familiar with that fixed blade uh that looks like a sog power pint and then we've got the olight uh carry bag with some accoutrement i like it nice carry uh mark p Ooh, he's got the wee hyphen beautiful picture i love that that's a i love i love how when people take pictures uh they're really well thought out you can tell because like for example this one has what photographers call leading lines going to the 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 subject uh that looks great we hyphen has always been one of those knives that just looks fantastic uh that would be a gavco design if i'm not mistaken beautiful beautiful thanks for sharing uh joe coming in hot with the magna cut the new release magna cut spider co pm2 yeah certified badass we all know spider co kills it on all of their steels although they do get some complaints that their s30v is a little bit chippy you know just a little chippy it's okay to be chippy you know when you're when you're called chippy it means that you know you're fired up i don't know i don't know where i was going with that um that is a asher knives i <sighs> failure <laughs> oh man i don't know what that is it's a it's an asher knife something uh kaleidoscope of knives coming in hot is that the I don't recognize this one either. I know that this one is the uh the Matsy Striga. The smaller one is the Striga. <sighs> you guys are killing me on your pocket checks. In please include the names. <laughs> do it do it for the kids at home watching. Who aren't supposed to be watching cuz this is supposed to be, you know, 18 plus content, but <clears throat> which one is that that's gonna kill me is that i feel like i should know what that is i don't 
All right. Yeah, guys, if you want to have your pocket check featured and most likely misidentified on the channel, uh, make sure to uh, post it in the pocket check discord. And uh, also, if you have any knives that you want to put up for sale within this group, feel free to do so in the knife yard sale. I've got a couple knives for sale up there as we speak. A couple of them did sell. Hallelujah. We got some extra cheddar to get some extra knives for the channel, which is great. Uh, it helps keep us going. So I do have two of them left out of the uh, listing that I put up. I've got the um, Arcane Plexus. That's serial number 174 out of the first run. And then I've got the Dark Bolt Design Stratus. Uh, and I'm the only one that I know of that has a backspacer on their Stratus. So if you're interested in either of those, feel free to hit me up. My email address is rollshambo.edc at gmail.com. Hit me up. And if you want to post your own knives that you have up for sale, uh, feel free to do that here. Just know that this is kind of an unmoderated place for channel members to connect. So police yourselves, be responsible, be safe, be careful. And if you have any doubts, you can always use PayPal goods and services. Hey, shout out to Neil McKenzie. Thanks for being a channel member, Neil. All right. Neil is carrying the Gerber Suspension NXT, the Kubi Momentum, the Springfield XD40 subcompact. Are you carrying it or is it bedside? Could be both. You know, one for one for the hip, one for the bed. I get it. I right, shout out to Joseph Jones. Welcome in, man. And did I see the Knight's Edge? Welcome in as well. Both channel members. Appreciate you fellas. Thanks for being channel members. Uh, shout out to Mike Morgan. We got a we got a moderator in the house. You better behave. Moderators don't fuck around. How's it going, Bluetooth Blades? How's it going, Dopey? We got more people in here. It's good to see the Saturday live stream starting to pick up. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna scroll up because I know I missed stuff. How's it going, said Stevie? You guys know Stevie. Stevie's a freaking legend. Uh, if for some odd reason you don't know said Stevie, he has his own channel that is pretty badass. Pillar of the community. Make sure to check out his channel if you're not there, which you probably already are. Jim Miller says, Roll Shambo, read the header. Did you, get, did you throw me a bone that I just missed, Jim? Is that what happened here? Hold on. Hold the phone. We're, go, we're scrolling up. He did. The Ritter Hogue RS, RSK1, uh, Rosecraft, Rosecraft Lusahatchee Jack, the Aries EDC Rock Hopper. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Jim throwing us a bone. He's like, he can't misidentify it. I gave him the answers. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Challenge accepted. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate you, man. Uh, Kaleidoscope and Knives says that he had the Matsy Streak and the Wear Alley P and the Bubba and Bubba My Beardy. Where was that? That was this one. Yeah. Yeah. The Bearded Dragon. Bubba. Nice. Very nice. Greg Vanderlip uh, carried the Kaiser Sparrow. People are starting to catch on. They're like, Roll Shambo is not going to get this. If I don't give him the answer, He's not gonna. He's not gonna get it. Uh, nice, very nice, Kaiser Sparrow. Uh, the Knight's Edge carrying one that looks like the. Uh, that looks like the Vanish, not the Banish. The Vanish. So that would be the slip joint version, if I'm not mistaken. Is that a slip joint? I know that Lundquist came out with several knives with this design the vanish the vanish i i don't know what the other one's called but i thought there was three that all had this this specific design jim miller says had to hammer three trolls in casey's lives a few minutes ago <laughs> drop the hammer drop the hammer jim i don't know why people do that i think the issue is like why do why do people like actively try to troll some channels? I think it's because they're secretly fans and they're fans that are tired of being ignored. And so 
they, they, you know, like, you know what would get this person's attention? How about I just be a dick? I'll just be a dick and blow up their comment section and say ridiculous things. Then I'll get a response. <laughs> what I found was, is the more you respond to trolls, the more they hang around. The funny thing is, the funny thing is, is that they're actually good for the algorithm. Like they're good for channels. Believe it or not, even the terrible comments are good for channels. The ridiculous ones. And I get some too. Like I had an argument in the comment section today with someone over the definition of what wireless meant on a on a flashlight. It was the uh, Wubin X3. And the guy was tearing me apart in my comment section saying, you said it was a wireless charging box. Well, you know, you put the light in the box with no wires and it charges it. And he wanted to argue with me the definition of wireless. Like, you know, it's good for the algorithm. Everyone gets trolls. And, uh, you know, I've, I've told this to Casey before. Just let it fly over the top, man. The more you feed the squirrels, the more they'll come back for more food. So if you don't like them, just stop responding to them. Let the, let their comments live in infamy in the comment section. Um, that is what I tell every channel uh, who talks about comment trolls. So now you know how I feel. How's it going, brand new America? Welcome in, brother. All right. Said Stevie says, I've been carrying my, manga my, my Manganus steel Kaimano all week. It is fabulous. It is fantastic. The Kaimano? Easily, easily one of the best releases of 2023. Without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, granted, it... The, the pre-order was 2023 it just came in so could you say that it maybe it's in fact the best one of the best releases of 2024 since they're available and shipping now i think that's a discussion that we need to have we might need to have that discussion do pre-orders do pre-order knives count for the the year that you could pre-order them in or the year that you actually get them and they ship asking for a friend it's me I'm the friend. Uh, said Stevie said Casey is just really fun to F with. <laughs> but poor Casey. <laughs> oh, man. Casey, Casey is fun to mess around with. Lone Star Cowboy says, troll drama. This is the way. This is Sparta. Is this the way or is this Sparta? Uh... Knife Nut 69 says squirrels everywhere. Yeah, they're everywhere, man. Don't feed the squirrels. Remy says, hey, Roll, thanks for the recommendation on the Kaiser Dogfish. It's a fun one. The Kaiser Dogfish is fantastic. As far as a, uh, a reasonably priced, I believe it's under 100 bucks. It's like 80 bucks, right? As far as a reasonably priced uh, quality button lock goes with, with great action, good ergos, the Dogfish is 100% a recommendable piece. And it's one that I can recommend uh, with a lot of faith because I know that people are going to like it because I like it. And uh, they're gonna, probably going to like it for the same reasons. It's just really well done. So yeah, uh, glad that you like your dogfish, man. It's a fantastic piece. Said Stevie says, I'm putting up, I'm putting up as my 2024 production knife of the year right now. I, I mean, when I checked it out, I couldn't find, like, I looked for things because I knew that Sharif was going to bring the heat on his Kaimano. I knew it. And so when I had the uh, prototype in my hands, I specifically tried to find something to pick apart on that knife. And I couldn't find any legitimate thing to say, you know what, you could have done this better or you could have done this different. And, and usually I could find something. Even on really, really nice knives, I could find something. Uh, he did that one right, though. And if you guys want to know which one we're talking about, let's do this. Let's go. Let's go on over to uh, Manganus Steel. I forget the name of his website because he changed it. But oh, Mangas, Mang. <laughs> I can't spell today. Uh, Meganus Steel. MS Dash Knives. That's what he changed his website to. Guys, there's steel. There's steel. 
they're still available. Uh, this is the knife we're talking about. It's the Kaimano, and it's no longer in pre-order. These are here. These are live. If you want one, I highly suggest you go check it out. Um, it's it, one of my favorite knives that I was able to check out last year as a prototype, but they're here. They're live. He's got he's got the sezzle hooked up, so you could do the sezzle. If that's your thing, you could do the shop pay. Um, it's beautiful. The purple haze fat carbon is absolutely baller. And this is one that I recommend as well. 275 bucks, guys. 275. You get titanium S35 VN. You get the fat carbon purple haze carbon fiber handles. Uh, action. Superb. It's sublime. Give me more time to come up with more adjectives. All right. I'm reading the I'm reading the chat. I'm trying to catch up. Uh, Stevie says it's a monster value for what you're getting. I agree. Under 300 bucks for this knife is a steal. I think that a fair like if if you would show me this knife and put it in my hands and said here here's what it's made out of what do you think this would cost my estimate on this would be about 325 so 275 is a really good deal for that you could also get it for even less uh if you want the natural micarta uh, now i don't prefer the nat the natural micarta it doesn't do anything for me aesthetically like the carbon fiber does, but it does cost $255. So you could save 20 bucks and get micarta if you prefer micarta. And that is a, a classy look. I think that the people that really beat on their knives are going to appreciate that micarta. Um, my car, like for me, I, I don't know why anyone, um, I, I don't, for me, I would prefer the carbon fiber version. I think that it's worth the extra 20 bucks. I think that aesthetically it looks it looks better. Uh, that is my personal preference. Some people really dig the micarta, but for me, the purple haze all day. Joseph Jones says, where is that for sale, Rolo? You know what? Let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, hang, hang tight. I'm going to pull up my chat and I'll, I will pin this. I will pin this in the chat for you guys, because this is definitely one that I more than recommend. Uh, they're here. You no longer have to wait on the pre-order it, it without a shadow of a doubt. I don't have an affiliate link. Um, so, you know, be that as it may, I absolutely recommend this one regardless. It's pinned. There you go, fellas. Uh, the Manganus Steel Kaimano pinned in the chat for you. I do this for you. Palmer Connolly says, my carta patinas, so becomes individu individualized. Yes, you are correct. Uh, also, my carta is really good because um, something my carta does is when it rains, it swells, depending upon if it's been like uh, oiled and polished over. If it hasn't been oiled and polished over, uh, water from the rain will actually swell the fibers of the micarta and it gives you more grip in a slipper slipperier environment. And so micarta is, is great as a user handle scale material. It's really good for that. And it does patina. Visually and aesthetically speaking, uh, the, the purple haze takes the cake for me. Said Stevie says, and if you want a deep cart, the Lynch Northwest ProTech clip fits. I like the clip that comes with it, man. <laughs> for me, I think you meant if you want a deep carry. If you want a deep carry, I like the, it comes with a 3d milled pocket clip, you know, from the jump. I, I don't see a reason to replace the pocket clip. I guess, you know, if, if you were to think that 3d milled clips are just too stiff, maybe, but for me, I'd, I would rather just keep the, the regular pocket clip. That is my preference. Uh, let's see. Ginger Fisher says I'd have to die the micarta. You know, I, I, 
I think that a black micarta probably would have been my preference with a micarta option. Being a natural micarta, though, I don't think it'd be too difficult to die. Hey, shout out to my man Top Dog in the house. Channel member, channel moderator, watch yourself. Top Dog's here. Thanks for joining in, brother. Good to see you. Thank you for all you do for the channel. All right. Um, let's see what's new out there. We're going to start with White Mountain Knives, and then I want to check out another retailer. We're gonna do, we'll are gonna do we do some window shopping because there's some good stuff coming soon. Oh, ooh, ooh. Did you guys see this one? It's the Riot PLXT. So this is actually kind of cool. This uses a pivot lock. Um, and I know that it, they're not in stock at White Mountain Knives right now, but you are, you can actually pick these up. I did see them in stock at NC Blade. They might have sold out. They might still be there. Talk, you know, talk about Micarta. It's it's a Riot in Nitro V, uh, Micarta in G10. So it's red G10 in Micarta. Aesthetically speaking, that's kind of poppy. Um, it uses this really interesting pivot lock. So you, you press down on the pivot and it acts like a button and releases the blade. So if you've been looking for new locking mechanisms, this is one of those. But not only that, it's a Riot for 117 bucks. A Riot for 117 bucks. You don't see that every day. Um, I would love to see this as a more premium version in like S90V and titanium because I'm a whore for titanium. But I think that this is really cool for people who want to experience a new locking mechanism uh, and a Riot knife without dropping, you know, three, four hundred bucks. Here you go. Riot for one hundred and seventeen dollars. And again, I, I know they're not in stock right here, but I think they might actually be in stock at NC Blade. Let's find out. Riot. What's it called? The PLXT. Yeah, there you go. Not in stock at White Mountain Knives, but in stock at uh, NC Blade. You can get the blue, you can get the black with the red, you can get the brown. Who? I don't understand why people buy brown. Like, I get the different color options. Brown, I would guess. If I was a betting man, I guess that brown is the, is the uh, variant that they sell the least of. I mean, can't carry it after Labor Day. But they got some good ones, and they got all the ones. That's cool. I like NC Blade. I really do. What is this? The Riot Knives Horizon D White Stone. So this is what happens when you go down the rabbit, the rabbit hole. Oh, it's sold out. I was going to say, that looks gorgeous. Yeah, that looks really good. I'm not surprised it's sold out. All right, sold out, sold out, sold out. But the Riot PLXT is in stock at NC Blade. So not in stock currently at White Mountain Knives. I'm assuming that because we're looking at these in the coming soon, that if you want to get it from White Mountain Knives and use, say, like a channel discount, um, <clears throat> these will probably be available there soon as well. I just, I'm really intrigued by the, the pivot locking mechanism. So that's cool. It's good to see new stuff. Uh, they've got another release of the Flytanium Arcade for those of you who like to go down that rabbit hole. Um, the Kaiser Beyond. Uh, that looks cool. Haven't checked it out yet. Maybe we can change that. Uh, they've got the Kunwu Pulsar XL in G Mascus and L Max. The Kunwu Ronin. Haven't seen that in a while. This. Big, big ass Tucson chef knife with the with the hollow handle. I kind of want this. Is that weird? I want this chopper, this cleaver. Like, I feel like I feel like that'd be fun to have in the kitchen. 14 C, uh, 46 bucks. Yeah. No one's questioning. No one's questioning your decisions when you're holding that knife. I promise you. 
looks great. I want it. It's 46 bucks. Who knows? Maybe we make that a reality. What else is new? Not seeing a whole lot of stuff that we haven't already seen and covered before. Got some send cut. That's it. What about new? Oh, they're carrying some Wubin stuff now. That's neat. I have uh, I have the X3. I reviewed it. And uh, it's a good light. Very fun to carry as an EDC. Oh, they do have some PLXTs at White Mountain Knives right now. They do. They just have some models that are already sold out. That's cool. So you can get the white one. Uh, you can get the Jade G10, or you can get one in orange or in this uh, black PVD and green micarta. Yeah, there you go. Get it at White Mountain Knives. Save yourself some money. RSB10 saves yourself, uh, let's see, what would that do? That, that would save you $11.70. That's a Big Mac at McDonald's. Why not? Palmer, uh, Palmer Connolly says, some of my family has Kershaw kitchen knives. Why not a Tucson cleaver? Why not? It gets work done. I guarantee you that that thing works well. <clears throat> Top Dog says, brown equals turd knife. I feel the same way. The Knight's Edge says, is that a $117 Riot? Yes, absolutely. And I think it's a great opportunity for people who want to experience a Riot and a new locking mechanism uh, at 117 bucks. You could call that a budget Riot. That's what it is. It's a budget Riot. Budget for Riot. I mean, 117 isn't exactly in the budget range, but it's close for them. Uh, Dazed D says they were all in stock yesterday. Yep. They're starting to sell. I guarantee. Look, this is what happens, guys. I, I'm not really an influencer yet. I have a channel. I don't really brand myself as an influencer. But once the actual knife influencers, you know, the Neves knives, the uh, metal complexes, the everyday minimalists, the once, you know, once the big channels who truly are influencers, once they get their hands on this knife, I guarantee you they'll be sold out. It's what happens with it's, it's what happened with the Max Ace capsule, uh, for example. I reviewed it. I bought it. Uh, when I bought it, had no issue picking it up, no issue at all. I uh, picked it up, reviewed it, said my piece. You know, I think it got like a thousand views or something on the video. Uh, it was still in stock, and then all of a sudden, Metal Complex reviews it, and they sell out. And people are like, oh, I can't believe I missed it. I can't believe. Oh. <laughs> if you if you wait, if you only ever wait for the influencers to tell you whether or not a knife is good, that's what you're going to run into. That's the nice thing about smaller channels is that we're not so much in. We're not at that influencer level yet, but we're still checking stuff out. And oftentimes we do buy stuff with our own money, which means that you're going to be getting an honest review. Not to say that the bigger channels don't do honest reviews, uh, just that if you want a review from someone that bought it, you're more likely to find that uh, with smaller channels. So just gonna throw that out there. I guarantee you guys, it's gonna happen. Metal Complex will review this knife. He'll say it's the greatest thing ever, and these will be sold out, guaranteed. The Knight's Edge says, Metal Complex gave me a 114 sub bump by mentioning my name last night. Hashtag influencer. Hey, congratulations, man. The Knight's Edge. He's doing good work over there. His channel is growing. Make sure to check him out. Bluminati Ninja says, get it. Get you the chopper. <laughs> get to the chopper. That's a terrible impersonation. The Night's Edge says, and it's sold out. <laughs> that's that's how it goes. That, that is how it goes. <clears throat> Top Dog says, the, uh, the cleaver is not weird. It's big and sharp, and you like all things sharp. I do. Dole knives annoy the crap out of me. Um, 
I'm an enthusiast. I'm a collector. Yes. But you know, I, I, I live by a set of rules. And one of those rules is, is that if I don't carry it or if I won't carry it, I won't keep it. So everything in my collection gets carried from the most expensive knife to the least expensive knife to everything in between. Everything gets carried. And if I don't want to carry it, I won't keep it. And I won't carry it if it's not sharp. So everything's got to have, it's got to be purpose built. If it just looks good and is a, you know, a, a, a fidget, adult fidget spinner, and I won't use it because the edge isn't sharp, it kind of defeats the purpose. Crazy Roach says, uh, Metal Complex is a salesman for all the free knives he gets. If he said they were all shit, he wouldn't, they wouldn't send him a knife. That's not necessarily true. I'll give you an example. Um, I remember when he first got his hands on, uh, it was a loner knife and he, he still does a fair amount of, uh, he still does a fair amount of content on uh, knives that are loaned to him. He's kind of slowed that down because he does get a lot of knife, brand new knives sent to him, but um, he did one on the Barnes. It was, uh, what's it called? It was, it's the Barnes. It's a, it's a cool integral knife and he slammed it, but he slammed it and people still used his affiliate link and bought it anyways. <laughs> uh, what I, what I'll say is this, because I, I don't always agree with everyone else's opinion. He's welcome to his own. Uh, do I think that it's entirely possible to be completely and 100% unbiased when you did not spend your own money, even if you intend to be. No, because it hits differently when you bought it with your own money, when you decided to buy it instead of get more groceries, when you decided to buy that $400 knife instead of, you know, uh, catch up on a car payment or, or, you know, when you make those decisions, your opinion, like it hits differently. It's easy to say that something is a high quality and built well when it is because a lot of these knives these days, like if you look at a knife built and made in 2024 versus a knife made and built in 2017, dollar for dollar, pound for pound, you're going to find better craftsmanship and better production work done now than then. So a lot of us are looking at these new knives coming out like yeah how can i say something bad about this 50 dollars knife when it's really well made i remember when x knife wasn't that great so do i believe that he's intentionally trying to sell people no uh but i will also say this having received plenty of free knives myself it is different when you are spending your own money even if you intend to be completely unbiased um when you don't spend your own money it is different it's easy to say that a knife is is good and well quality and worth it uh, when you didn't spend your own money because you didn't sacrifice anything to say that. It's different when you actually buy it <clears throat> and you made those sacrifices and you in your budget. That's when it's different. Not that you guys asked for that opinion. That's just my opinion. Uh, Knife Nut says, Roll Shambo, for, uh, for you carry fixies? If so, check out the dart from Northern Blade Works. I have a few fixed blades. I don't carry them often, and that's primarily because I don't necessarily have a, a big need for fixed blades. Um, I, I have more of a need for folding knives. It feels like overkill when I pull out a fixed blade and I just need to like open a piece of mail, right? Uh, my, my needs are pretty simple. I like fixed blades. I just don't carry them often. Uh, if I, when I go camping, I'll carry a fixed blade. Uh, anytime I go out in the wilderness or go hiking, I'll carry a fixed blade. I think they're great for that. Um, otherwise I'm carrying a, a folding knife. One moon says, mmm, cookies. What's up all? Hey, welcome in, man. Todd Carr says, free knives are basically free advertisement for the company that sends them as basically paid promotions. Yeah, you know, I've, uh, I've, I haven't been getting a ton of, uh, of free knife offers lately, you know, and that's because I do, I, I do try to be as, um, conscious about the fact that it's, it's tough to be unbiased. You know, when you don't, when you didn't buy it yourself, it's tough to be unbiased. Uh, I'll say this. For every $300 knife that was given to me, which is not many, there have been a few, but it's not many, I've bought four or five others. 
<laughs> um, so there's that. The Knight's Edge says, Roll Shambo, I have a Beowulf sitting in my knife drawer that says, You are indeed an influencer, sir. I've been branded. Look, I just talk about what I like. Uh, Joseph Jones says, I bet it's a learning experience and fun to go back and look and laugh. I wish I had recorded mine. That would have been hilarious. I feel like I came in on a conversation late there. Palmer Connolly says, there's no such thing as unbiased. As far as I'm concerned, that is impossible. Yeah. I mean, we all have biases based on something, right? I can see that. Knife Nut says, try the Asher Knives Little Buddy. Awesome fixed blade for only 115 bucks. Let's check. Let's, uh, let's look at, let's look it up. The Asher Knives Little Buddy. Yeah, 115 bucks. Okay. Uh, looks like seven inches overall, three inch blade. S90V, I approve. Kydex sheath. Something I've never understood is why do why do fixed blade makers like there's so many fixed blades out there that you can buy and they don't come in a sheath. That's rule number one. If you're going to send me a fixed blade that's meant to be carried, send me a sheath. Why do people do that? I don't get it. This one comes with a sheath, not to not to confuse anybody. You know, that looks like it would be a great workhorse of a knife. Aesthetically speaking, it doesn't pull at the heartstrings. Or I guess I guess I should say aesthetically speaking, it doesn't pull at the purse strings, but I bet you that that is a, a good knife, a good steel, good materials, fair price for S ninety V two, and it, it is. It looks like it'd be a great size for ADC. Asher knives. I've been wanting to check them out for a minute. <clears throat> they always seem to sell out, though. Yeah, they always seem to sell out. Uh, let's go ahead and check out a uh, a new site that we recently came across. Uh, this is Blade Runner HQ. Uh, Blade Runner HQ is one that I recently found out about, and I'm telling people about them because I every time I look at the at their site, they always have stuff that is sold out in other places. Uh, for example, Dead Reckon, dude, they've got all the well, nope, they sold out of most of them now. They still have one though. The Ridgeback sold out everywhere. Not at Blade Runner HQ. Check that out. They've got a Ridgeback in titanium, 435 bucks. It's the price they're going for. American-made integral titanium button lock. I'll take a deep breath. But that's what I'm talking about. Like they have stuff like that. That's cool. That's super cool. Um, what else? I don't know how because several people reached out to me and said that they bought one of these after my last live stream. The American Blade Works Model 1. This is their exclusive. I didn't even know they were big enough to have exclusives, but check that out. 80s camo carbon inlay, 100% American made. American Blade Works Model 1 in titanium and magna cut, 333 bucks. That is a banger. Several people reached out to me and said that they bought this knife after I mentioned it on the last live stream, guys. Um, if you want one, I would go pick one up because once people start to realize that you can get the ABW Model 1 with a camo carbon inlay, they're probably going to sell a, They're probably going to sell out once people realize. Top Dog says, back in the day, fixed blade always came with a holder of some kind, even if it was plastic. Yeah. Look, I get it. Sometimes you don't carry the knife. Sometimes it's just a knife that you have with you. Like, But a knife should always have a sheath. It should always have a way to be made safe. Like, what are we doing? This isn't medieval times. We're not wrapping it in grandfather's cloak and throwing it in the, you know, in the tr underneath the trap door. 
Give a fixed blade away to be safe. If you don't, you're asking for it. Oof. What I was really hoping was is that they would have the Model 2 with a uh, as an exclusive. I see that they had one, or at least they had them, and then they sold out. But this is a site I would definitely keep your eye on, guys, because it's one that the scalpers don't know about yet. It's out of North Carolina. Um, heavily endorsed by plenty of people in the community. Definitely check them out. Brand New America says, Spyderco Mule, not for you then. So the Mule team is a, is a different story because that's really a knife that Spyderco makes specifically for people who are interested in like basically beta testing their new steels. Because the Mule team always comes out in the new steels that Spyderco is interested in, in using. And then they use feedback from the people that buy those steels to let them know how well people like them, uh, field any customer complaints. And so like it's a knife that's designed for, for you, the customer, to take it and make your own sheath, to make your own handle scales, to use it the way that you see fit and then give them feedback. It's one of the things that Spyderco does really well. Um, Given what it's meant to be, I'm okay with the mule team being just bare bones tester steel because the way that it is, it's meant for you to make it your EDC, not the other way around so that they can make knives in that steel uh, much better. That was a lot. <laughs> All right. Uh, what else? I've been wanting to, you know, we're talking about fixed blades. Let's check out some fixed blades here. Fixed blades are, are really, really cool. Man, the beans blades designs do look like sharpened pry bars though. Has anyone used one of these? Can you confirm or deny? Is that in fact usable or is that a, is that a, a hammer with an edge? You know one that I've always wanted, always wanted? Even though it makes no sense, it, it, there is no utility purpose for this knife. This is an offensive blade, the Microtech SBD, and it's been around for a while. It's a Borka design, but this is like modern classic dagger style. Beefy, beefy. Zombie apocalypse fixed blade, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's got, a, it's got a hole in the tang. It's a full tang design, which means that it's very sturdy. I'm not very knowledgeable when it comes to fixed blade design, to be honest with you. But I think that you could, in fact, probably wrap this around a pole and use it as a spear if you wanted to. I know that sounds drastic, but I see a lot of applications here. You know, I see the grooves in the handle scales. I think that you could, in fact, wrap that around something and, and use it as like a survival spear. It's crazy. We'll zoom in for the people in the back. Yeah. Cla your classic dagger design. I like it. Top Dog says, Spider Co. is run by some smart cookies. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, the Night's Edge says, just saw the attention to Detail Mark II for the first time yesterday and almost shat my pants with wonder. <laughs> You gotta be careful. <laughs> gotta be careful. Uh, attention to detail knives look fantastic. I've had an, I've had, I haven't tried one yet because they're extremely expensive and nobody's lent me one. But I've seen mixed reviews. Um, I've seen mixed reviews where some of them came out with Lock Rock. Like, how do you charge a thousand dollars for a knife with Lock Rock? Not to say that every single one they sold has that. But because they're kind of like a mid-tech type knife and, and a lot of that stuff is done by hand, uh, you, can, you can expect for some of them to have, for example, Lock Rock. Remy says, Fixed Blade Borka SB1 is an absolute favorite. I'm not familiar with that. Is that the same as the, as the SBD? Uh, Todd Carr says, BNA, I thought it was only BD1N or AEBL. Cool to see Spy27 on the list as well. Yeah. Uh, 
Hey, welcome in, Mind of Milton. Thanks for being a channel member, brother. Oh, yeah. Jim Miller says, just ordered the ABW from Blade Runner HQ. Join in the ranks, man. <laughs> I'm, Jim, I, you were joining the ranks. I, I, you're like the fourth person to, t <laughs> to tell me that they, uh, that they took advantage of that. I don't know if they're going to do any more exclusives. I need to reach out to the guys at Blade Runner HQ and get some info from them. I hear that the name of the guy that runs it is RJ. Apparently, he's pretty active at like Blade shows. I'll have to reach out to him. Um, he carries some good stuff. But it's one that I... This is a site that I think that we're going to check out more frequently. I like the layout of the site. I like the fact that they have a lot of American-made knives. They, they don't only carry American-made knives. Um... But they have a lot of stock that you just don't see everywhere else. Uh, Microtech Matrix, they've got that in stock. Uh, let's see. They got the Civivi Cairo, Kershaw Launch 10. What else? A Protec Runt 5 with two-tone stainless handle and two-tone 20 CV. That looks sweet. The Ridgeback, already talked about that. Da, da, da. They got some Hyperions. Uh, they've got the most popular version of the Matrix. They got the Red Horse Knife Works Hell, Hellraiser. Kershaw Livewire. All right. So I'm not seeing a whole lot of stuff that wasn't here the last time we checked them out. That's okay. Um, but we're going to be checking back in on these guys. <clears throat> because I like what they're carrying. I like the, the offerings. And most of all, I like the fact that they, the scalpers haven't they haven't taken down the site yet. Remy says, uh, "Blade Runner HQ just an absolute win with the name. Well done. I agree. I think it's pretty close to Blade HQ, but it's cool. I like it." Palmer Connolly says, is Blade Runner HQ the, the one that was burglarized recently? Yes, they were. Uh, however, um, in the last live stream, a channel member that goes by Chef Rocky, many of you know him, uh, gave me some info and said that they actually caught the asshat who robbed the store. And so I'm assuming that they got their knives back. Shout out. Shout out to Blade Runner HQ. Hopefully you were made whole or as whole as you could be. Yep, Todd Carr says, Palmer, I think so. They caught the perp as well. Yeah, they did. Justice. It's nice when karma comes through. Absolutely. All right. <clears throat> so, guys, uh, we're getting close to the end here. So, I wanted to take a moment to step back and say thank you. Um, I know... I know content production has been a little bit lackluster this last week. I'm sorry. I haven't been feeling good. My throat is killing me after just doing a live for, a, you know, an hour. I've got a lot of good stuff coming out this next week. Uh, reviews. I'm going to be working on uh, bringing back Grail or Garbage. So uh, we're going to have knife rankings again. Expect more content on that. Uh, I'm working on a Steel Snobs episode as we speak. A new knife reviews. I've got loaners coming in. I've got knives coming in. Uh, it's going to be great. So expect to see some more good stuff from this channel this week. To everyone uh, who is a new member, whether you joined of your own free will or whether you were gifted uh, by another channel member such as Blue Minati Ninja, thank you for being channel members. Thank you to those of you who donate to the channel, who subscribe to the channel, who comment on the content. Uh, and thank you to those who join in the Discord. Uh, if you're a channel member, consider joining the Discord. It's a great way to stay connected with other channel members and people who support your community. So, with all of that being said, guys, that's going to be all it is. That's going to be all for me. I'm heading out. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my Saturday, and I hope you do the same. To some of you, I'll see you soon. To everyone else, I'll see you later. <laughs>